Welcome to my lecture. Today we are going to discuss about inertia force, inertia torque and DLMH principle. These three things uh, we have already discussed in the uh, sem second semester also in the mechanics of uh, rigid body and I'm just going to review the basic concepts that what we have already studied as far as inertia force, torque are concerned and then we are going to just discuss what is D'Alembert's principle and how we can apply this D'Alembert's principle to solve a dynamic problem okay so that we can easily convert the dynamic problem into a static problem so that is what the thing we are going to see in D'Alembert's principle okay so first of all what is inertia force okay so when we think of inertia force uh, we cannot exactly see where it is okay it is a uh, an imaginary force okay so the fundamental thing is it is an imaginary force nobody knows where exactly it is but it is an imaginary force and it is numerically equal to the accelerating force in magnitude but opposite in direction okay so it is numerically equal to the accelerating force in magnitude but opposite in direction okay so before uh, getting into this inertia force let me just uh, give you an idea about what is uh, newton's newton's second law okay so we need to know what is newton's second law okay so if a body if it is uh, subjected to an unbalanced force then it has it will gain some acceleration and it will move towards that direction of the acceleration okay suppose if you have a body uh, here okay so it is kept on a table then you are applying a force so you are applying a force so that force is resultant force is f okay if you are applying a force with some magnitude then the body will move towards this direction so this is the direction of the motion okay and it gains acceleration along this direction okay it gains acceleration that is acceleration will also in this direction okay that is a a is acceleration that linear acceleration is also happen to be in this direction okay then so what would happen is there is some force which opposes the motion and bring the object into equilibrium condition okay bring the object into equilibrium condition so what is that force is m times acceleration m times acceleration okay so this is the force which is imaginary and which brings the body into equilibrium okay and we call this forces inertia force okay so based on newton's second law what is that force the applied force is directly proportional to mass and acceleration of the part so this is what the newton's second law okay when your body is subjected to an uh, unbalanced force that is f it gains some acceleration and it is numerically equal to mass times the acceleration it is what the newton's second law okay so in free body diagram how it looks like this newton second law f is acting this direction okay i am applying a motion by uh, giving them unbalanced force called f okay so this is an unbalanced force called f so because of that the body gains some acceleration along this direction okay but some force that is inertia force which acts in the opposite direction and bring the body into equilibrium that means it's bring the body into the rest condition okay that is what the thing okay so you can just feel that okay so uh, if, if you have some object in the table initially you push the object in some direction it will move but once you remove the force what would happen it comes to rest okay so how it comes to rest the one thing is because of friction another thing is due to the inertia inertia force is purely depend on what mass and acceleration okay so here you can just easily understand that the inertia force is high the inertia force is very high if mass of the object is more okay so if 
you find somebody who is weighing more than 100 kg you cannot uh, move him okay you cannot push him so if somebody weighs 50 kg or 20 kg then you can easily push him so he'll move he, he'll automatically respond to what you did okay but it will not happen somebody who weighs more than 100 kg okay so if the weight or the mass of the body is very high then the object has obviously has most more energy or force so it is really difficult to move the object okay so that is what the understanding of the energy of force okay it just got that idea from the newton's second law so the newton's second law says f is equal to the mass times acceleration so by definition how to say if your body if it is subjected to an on balance force called F, then it gains acceleration towards the direction of the motion. Okay. And then F is directly proportional to acceleration and F is equal to mass times acceleration. And what is energy of force? M times acceleration is the energy of force. It which acts exactly opposite to the applied force or the unbalanced force F and it brings the body into equilibrium and what is it nature is it is equal in magnitude and it is opposite in direction okay so inertia of force is m times a so because of this opposite uh, direction we just mentioned here it is negative okay minus m a okay so here m is mass of the body so you have to uh, give it in kilogram and a is the acceleration okay the unit of acceleration is meter per second square okay so this is what that idea about the inertia of force okay so if you think of inertia it is an imaginary force okay so you cannot actually uh, see anything that uh, like about the inertia of force because it just act imaginarily because you are pushing the body in this direction then after a few seconds it comes to rest how because the energy of force bring the body into equilibrium by acting in the opposite direction okay it pushes in this direction it pushes in the opposite direction so f is equal to ma and what is energy of force and this is called energy of force this is the external force this is the energy of force so the magnitude of energy of force is m times acceleration and this negative means it is opposite in direction so now I hope you are clear about what is inertia force okay so similarly inertia torque okay it is also uh, imaginary torque okay so here so i'll just uh, explain with that uh, concept okay so here a body is rotated with a torque t okay so initially so you're rotating a body with a torque t okay so it comes to rest because an another torque that is called inertia torque which is acting in the opposite direction to bring the body into equilibrium and this torque we call that as inertia torque that is i times the alpha that is angular acceleration of the rigid body okay so the same thing so okay so there f is equal to ma and here as far as torque is concerned torque is equal to i alpha this is the newton's newton's second law okay so according to newton's second law so f is equal to ma or otherwise for a rotating system like this torque force is replaced by torque and mass is replaced by mass moment of inertia and linear acceleration is replaced by angular acceleration that is the only difference that you or can experience between this inertia force and inertia torque okay so there it is the linear motion f is equal to ma here it is a rotary motion or angular motion and because of that t is equal to i times the angular acceleration okay so uh, it is the uh, accelerating torque and this is the inertia torque which acts in the opposite direction if it is clockwise means it's going to be acting in the counterclockwise direction so that the body can be brought into equilibrium condition okay that is what the inertia torque is okay so here uh, we need to know what is that uh, i that is moment of inertia okay so the unit 
uh, we can just find out by using these things m into uh, radius of gyration square so kilogram meter square okay the radius of gyration the unit is meter okay so the angular acceleration of the rigid body we just denote it in radian per second square okay so this is about the inertia torque okay both the concepts are same so inertia force and inertia torque which both are applied to bring the body into equilibrium the only thing is both are equal in magnitude as far as accelerating force and accelerating torque is concerned but opposite in direction because it brought the object into rest condition or equilibrium condition okay so now you are just uh, having a clear cut idea about the uh, inertia force and inertia torque and the next thing is d'alembert's principle okay so we have got the newton's second law okay so newton's uh second law okay that is f is equal to ma and small change which has been made to this uh, formula okay that is newton's second law so that it will become d alembert's principle a small modification is done so what is the modification we already know that what is that because i'm just going to bring this uh, component which is on my right hand side into left hand side that is the only modification that i am going to make to derive the concept of d alembert's okay so what is that f is already in my on my left hand side okay i'm just going to bring this ma into left hand side f minus ma is equal to 0 okay and uh, from our previous uh, discussion what we know is so this ma is what is that inertia force is so inertia force is ma okay so inertia force is equal to ma okay so that is what the thing so f minus inertia force is equal to zero okay so i didn't do anything on that newton second law only thing i did is i just brought this component ma to on my left hand side of the equation and it has become f minus ma which is equal to zero so f minus ma is inertia force okay so now i'll just uh, show that in a diagrammatic way okay so the same case i'm just taking an uh, a mass okay so which weighs uh, 10 kilogram okay which is being uh, subjected to an force f okay which is being subjected to an force f okay so now if it is subjected to a force f then it is not a static condition it is in dynamic condition because it is going to move in this direction because motion is happening okay sometimes we are pushing a car from behind okay then what happened is the car will move some distance okay based on the initial application of the force it will move some distance it will cover some distance similar thing happened here okay so it is not in static condition it is in dynamic condition okay so if you if the system is a dynamic condition we cannot apply the equilibrium rules or equilibrium laws so that we can solve that problem so for that purpose d lambda's principle is used to convert a dynamic problem into a static problem so that is what the application of this DLMS principle. It is used to convert dynamic problem into a static problem that we use to solve very easily. Okay. So how to convert this dynamic problem? Uh, so up to this point, so it is a dynamic problem. Okay. So the object is in motion. Okay. So it is a dynamic problem. So how I am going to convert that into static problem means I am just going to add the inertia force. Okay. I am just going to in the free body diagram so it is a free body diagram of the object okay it is a free body diagram so how i am going to convert that into static condition is by applying a inertia force because you see here 
if i brought this ma into this side so what happened is sigma f is equal to zero that means net force which is acting on the system becomes zero so here f minus inertia force is zero so i'm just completely taking these forces sigma f is equal to zero now you see as long as uh, this case is concerned it is a dynamic problem here it becomes static problem so i can just simply take this is m a so i just what is it free body i'm just going to write the equation for a static condition so f this minus because it is in opposite direction is equal to zero that is what the static condition okay so this dlms principle is used to convert a dynamic problem into a static problem by considering inertia forces in the analysis that is what the dlms principle is if you take the consideration of the inertia force into the analysis then the problem will become dynamic into static that is what the dlms principle is okay so how we did those things okay f is equal to ma we have brought this ma into that side so what happens is it becomes a force so net force is equal to zero that means it is a condition of static problem okay so here what we did is we have marked we have considered this energy of force in the free body diagram so if you brought this energy of force into the analysis then it becomes static problem once it becomes static problem it is so simple so net force along the motion direction is equal to zero so f it is along the motion direction so i just put that a positive it is opposite to that of motion direction so f minus ma is equal to zero so f minus ma is equal to zero or otherwise sigma f is equal to zero the next step you have to write f minus ma is equal to zero that is called d alambert's principle okay so now you can easily understand okay so what is dlms principle is okay it has been derived from the concept of newton's second law that is f is equal to ma what we have done is simple uh interchange of that component okay i just brought this ma into my left hand side of the equation so it becomes this side becomes zero okay so earlier it has got some component on the right hand side but here there is no component that is exactly it become static problem that is sigma f is equal to zero but only thing that i have to do is this me i have to bring that into analysis in the free body diagram if you can add this me in the analysis the system becomes static problem so it becomes f minus me is equal to zero or the net force along the direction of motion is equal to zero that is what the d lambert's principle is okay for def defining the d lambert's concept what you have to do is in the analysis if energy of force is included along with the external force then the problem becomes static it is called d lambert's principle so what you have to do is you have to write this equation f minus ma is equal to zero ma is energy of force this drawing also you need to draw so this is about the d lambert's principles okay it is one of the very important concept as far as dynamics of machinery is concerned because uh, if you take that problem as it is that means if you consider the problem as dynamic then it is really difficult to solve that problem so by using d lambert's principle what we can do is we can convert that dynamic problem into static problem and then we can easily so resolve that problem by taking sigma fx is equal to zero just like that then i can find out all the unknowns m acceleration i can easily solve that problems okay so this is a very important concept that you have to remember and you need to understand clearly so that we can apply that in the uh, problem okay that we are going to solve uh, in the near future okay so i hope that uh, you clearly understood that about uh, dlm's principle